Welcome to Electron Line. Our first stop is Lake Vostok. Where do we find Lake Vostok? Well, it's a large underground lake. And when we say underground, it's basically under ice lake at the very tip of the earth at the southern hemisphere underneath the large ice sheet that covers the Antarctic. The Antarctic has a huge ice sheet that covers most of the continent. And in some places, it's more than two miles thick. And it is so at the near the research station, the Vostok research station, which is being kept going by Russia, the Russian scientists there. It's also been the place where the coldest temperature ever was recorded on the earth at minus 89 degrees Celsius. Now, what they did was they dug down or they drilled down a core all the way through the ice sheet. Notice the ice sheet was 3,623 meters thick, which is more than two miles thick. Then they had to go through an additional about 200 meters of accreted ice that was adhered to the bottom of that huge ice shield. And below that was a large lake of liquid water. And it's liquid because of the enormous pressure of the ice sheet pushing down on it. The temperature of the water is about minus three degrees Celsius. And since it's underneath all that ice, it's completely encapsulated by the ice and there's absolutely no light that gets through to the lake. It's completely pitch dark there. And it turns out that that lake has been buried underneath that ice for at least two million years. You would think that no life could possibly exist in a place like that. And to think of it, those conditions are probably very similar to what we would find on the moon Europa around Jupiter and potentially also around the moon Enceladus around Saturn. We know that there's vast oceans of liquid water underneath some very thick ice sheets and so the conditions are probably very similar. The difference of course is that there may not be any life on the surface of those moons and therefore unlikely that there would be life down deep down miles down in below the ice where as opposed to the earth in the Antarctic there used to be conditions where life could survive matter of fact we found all kinds of dinosaur fossils and fossils of trees and ferns on the Antarctic island so therefore we know that life was hospitable or we should say the conditions were hospitable to life before, and maybe these are the only survivors from that time long ago. So it probably isn't the case where there was no life there at all, and there was this incredibly inhospitable place, and somehow life, when life began there on its own, that's probably not what happened. But the fact that it's there after millions of years of encapsulation by several miles thick sheets of ice, it is almost impossible to imagine that life could actually exist there, but it does exist. Now, how big is this lake? Well, it turns out the depth of the lake is between 650 and 800 meters. That's a half a mile. Below the lake, we have a bunch of sediments that are about 300 to 400 meters thick. And the area of the lake is 11,500 square kilometers. So that's about one third the land area of Belgium. This is a huge lake. And it has a volume of about 5,400 cubic meters of water. That is just an incredible amount of water below that, it, that ice sheet. And what did we find? Well, it turns out we found over 3,500 different species. Now, the way this was discovered is we went down there, we collected samples from the water, we brought those up, and then we did an analysis. The analysis was done by something called metagenomo metagenomics. It's hard to pronounce metagenomics. So what they do is they take all the sample of the biological material, they put it all together, and then they do a statistical analysis on all of it together to look for strands of DNA and RNA. And when they do that, they recognize all the various different forms of DNA and RNA where they know that these are separate species. And at that method, they did this grand sampling and they discovered there were over 3,500 different species. Now remember, there's no sunlight whatsoever, only high pressure and minus three degrees Celsius and buried for over two million years and yet there's thousands of thriving and living species down there in that lake it's almost incredible to believe that that could actually happen but there it is it's about the worst place in the world you can go to and yet life exists in those places which gives us hope of course that the similar kind of conditions might exist on europa and salada maybe dion other places where similar similar conditions may exist on those on those moons so it's possible, at least, we have an idea that those kind of conditions exist on the Earth and may exist elsewhere as well. And that 
is why we do that search and the studies of life forms in those incredibly inhospitable places on the world. How cold is the water, the water in uh, uh, Europa? Well, it turns out that we presume that the water on Europa is probably similar in temperature than here because it's under many miles thick of ice and the pressure would therefore uh, the enormous thick sheet of ice, and ice is a very bad uh, conductor of heat, so we could assume that the temperature of the water there is probably in the same neighborhood, maybe minus 3 degrees Celsius, maybe minus 5, minus 10, but not all that cold compared to the temperature on the surface. So, but is it water? And it would be water. We assume that it's kind of briny kind of water, so it wouldn't be pure water. It would be kind of water containing lots of different brine and salt and that kind of thing and potentially a place where life could exist, except could life begin there? And that's a big question. It's not a very good place to begin for life, but it's a place where life could exist once life exists there. Asteroid. Asteroid could be a possibility. You never know. <laughs>